In early 1985, the Ugandan Ministry of Health assigned a team of medical professionals to investigate an outbreak of mysterious deaths in Kasansiro, which is situated near Tanzania's border on Lake Victoria. This village had long been notorious for its affiliation with smugglers and bar girls. In the past four years, a perplexing wasting ailment, known as slim, to locals, had instigated over 100 fatalities. Explanations for the deaths abounded within the local community. Some people attributed them to witchcraft, while others postulated that it was God's punishment for immoral behavior and loose living. In 1985, blood samples taken at Casancero were tested and then confirmed to be AIDS, Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, a deadly disease predominantly spread through sexual activity. Subsequent investigations showed that the causative virus of AIDS, namely HIV, a slow-acting retrovirus that infects individuals for up to 10 years before serious illness occurs, was rife among the population in the trading centers of Rakai district of southern Uganda and the neighboring Tanzanian district of Kagera. Even before the world had become aware, Rakai and Kagera became the focal point of a global HIV-AIDS epidemic that impacted an entire population. AIDS first originated from viruses that came from two primates in Africa, chimpanzees and sooty mangabe monkeys. In fact, it had already been active for more than 20 years before 1981 when it was identified to be the cause of multiple deaths in the United States with no known cure yet. In the 1970s, AIDS cases quietly spread throughout a swath of Central Africa until it was detected by Dr. Anne Bailey, professor of surgery at the University Teaching Hospital in Lusaka, Zambia. This detection marked the first noted case within this region. AIDS revealed its destructive power in the Rakai district of southern Uganda, where the epidemic started to spread. By 1984 it had reached Kampala, carried there by Tanzanian soldiers as they proceeded northward and fought against Armin's forces. It moved rapidly along the arterial highways of Uganda, carried by truck drivers and crews stopping off in the bars and brothels for a night's refreshment and entertainment. A survey of the adult population of Liontonde carried out in 1989 showed that 52.8% were infected by HIV. By the end of the 1980s more than half of the women in their 20s living in trading centers in Rakai and one quarter of those living in rural areas were HIV positive. An official survey in 1989 estimated that nearly 800,000 Ugandans were HIV positive. The death toll steadily rose. By 1988, four sub-districts in Rakai had each recorded more than 1,000 deaths. A 1989 survey of Rakai showed that out of a total population of 354,000, there were nearly 25,000 orphans or 12.6% of the total of all children under 15 years of age. In Rwanda, a serological survey taken in 1986 of people from all age groups exposed similar trends. 17.8% of urban dwellers and 1.3% of rural inhabitants tested positive for HIV while Kigali had the highest prevalence rate with 21%. The count in two towns located in Hutu-dominated western Rwanda was even more alarming. Ruangarai had a 22% prevalence rate while Jizenyi, which is near the border of the DRC, recorded 31%. In Jizenyi, a town located in the central region of Africa, an alarming number of individuals aged between 26 and 40 tested positive for HIV. The main AIDS virus, HIV-1, subsequently spread far and wide to neighboring countries like Kenya in the east, southern Africa to the south, and West Africa to its west. The swift spread of HIV and AIDS was largely due to migrant workers, armies engaging in civil wars, refugees fleeing their home countries, women and girls driven into prostitution by poverty, as well as the exploitation of young victims by older men seeking companionship. Figures for cumulative AIDS cases from African countries reported to the World Health Organization in January 1990 showed Uganda's share to be the highest at 20.2%. Kenya took second spot with 16.5%. South Africa was not exempt from the impact of HIV-1, as evidenced by its first survey on prevalence in 1990. Additionally, countries such as Ghana, Nigeria and Côte d'Ivoire in West Africa were also affected by this virus. In 1989 some 50% of Abidjan's prostitutes, tested for other diseases, were found to be HIV-1 positive. A second AIDS virus, HIV-2, with a lower virulence and infectivity than HIV-1, also affected areas of West Africa, adding to the toll. 
the severity of the epidemic added to Africa's existing hardships. Those most at risk were ages 15 through 50, who are typically the engine that drives society forward. Astonishingly, half of those living with HIV acquired it before turning 25 and passed away from AIDS by age 35. With the devastating loss of adults due to illness and death, every level of society experienced a deep shock as households and communities struggled with a mounting number of orphans while simultaneously having their reservoirs of talented personnel, including teachers, nurses, doctors, administrators and industrial workers, heavily depleted. Sadly, mother-to-child transmission caused infant mortality to skyrocket, leaving generations of children without childhoods. Instead of attending school, they were forced to work or provide care for the sick and dying, struggling endlessly just to survive. As the epidemic's effects continue to expand, health services have been overwhelmed, leaving families in poverty and farm work suffering. Businesses encountered difficulties while productivity decreased, resulting in reduced availability of public services from governments. In reaction to this disaster, many African governments denied or ignored the issue. They wanted to depict AIDS as a foreign importation or invention and obscure reality by claiming it was merely prejudiced propaganda designed to reduce African sexual enthusiasm and fertility rates. Zimbabwe's health minister forbade physicians from attributing deaths to AIDS, while Kenya focused more on preserving its stature as a prominent tourist destination than informing citizens of the dangers they faced. The media was largely silent about the dangers of AIDS, and many Africans assumed an apathetic attitude towards it. In Tanzania, people joked that AIDS stood for Acha Inwi Dogadog Siachi, meaning let it kill me, I shall never abandon the young ladies, in Swahili. In Zaire, now the DRC, where AIDS was known by the French acronym SIDA, university students translated it humorously as Syndrome Imaginaire pour de Courage les Amaru, an idea that quickly spread elsewhere. In the 1980s, just two countries stood out in their successful campaigns against HIV, AIDS, Uganda and Senegal. In particular, Ugandan President Yaori Museveni took a pioneering stance by speaking up about the potentially fatal consequences of AIDS at numerous events throughout his country after taking office in 1986. The disease, he said, was a threat to all Ugandans. He strongly urged all government departments to address this critical issue, forming a national AIDS control program and including religious leaders from the Protestant, Catholic and Muslim communities. He worked diligently towards diminishing any shame or stigma associated with the illness. In 1986, before AIDS had even become a priority in Senegal, President Abdo Diouf mobilized his government resources to create an anti-AIDS program. He further requested that religious and civic organizations join forces alongside him as they battled against the virus. Despite the delicate nature of this topic, Friday sermons at mosques and Sunday services in churches were utilized as opportunities to spread safe sex messages. The Senegalese government enforced a strict policy that was promoted through both the media and educational systems, which demanded sex workers to register themselves for regular health assessments. Thanks to this powerful strategy, Senegal succeeded in keeping its HIV infection rate below 2%. Unfortunately, the rest of Africa was left to battle the AIDS epidemic with very little action taken by the governments. In the 1980s, because of the long time lag before AIDS struck down its victims, the death toll was counted in the thousands. Only in the 1990s did the full extent of the disaster become apparent. By then, the death toll was counted in the millions. In 